If you got the last video, this site might look familiar. Last Sunday, we explored one of its standout animations, the scroll effect, where text expands as you move down the page, followed by a background reveal transition. But as I mentioned then, the site is packed with even more cool interactions, and I thought it definitely deserved another breakdown. This time, while browsing through the rest of the site, I came across this really striking sticky guard section. Here is how it works. When a new card enters the viewport, the previous one pins in place and as you keep scrolling, it gets pushed back with a smooth 3D rotation while fading away. You have probably seen this kind of animated card stack on a lot of award winning websites, which is exactly why I wanted to rebuild it. So after a few hours of experimenting, I put together my own version of this effect using GSAP and scroll trigger. In this video, I'll walk you through how you can create this kind of sticky card animation with very minimal amount of scroll trigger setup. If you find my work helpful, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's start with the structure. First, I'm adding a hero section at the top of the page. This will act as the opening frame before any animations begin. Next, I'm adding a matching outro section at the very end of the page that gives us a clean final frame once the scroll sequence is done. Inside both of these sections, I'm dropping an H1. This makes sure the page doesn't feel empty while we are scrolling and it also sets a visual concept that mirrors the original site. Now let's build the main sticky section. I'm creating a wrapper called sticky cards to hold everything. We could generate each card dynamically with JavaScript like we do in other videos, but to keep the JS focused purely on the animation logic today, we'll define the cards directly in HTML. Inside this section, I'm adding a single card element with a unique ID. Within that, I'm adding a card in our container. This is because we'll enable 3D transforms on the outer card using CSS and we'll apply the actual 3D motion to card inner div. That separation keeps our scroll trigger logic simpler. Each card inner has four parts, card info, card title, card description, and card image. In card info, I'm adding a short paragraph for a one line intro. In card title, I'm adding an H1 for the main word. In card description, I'm adding another paragraph for a longer caption. And in card image, I'm placing an image element for the artwork. With the first card in place, I'm duplicating it three more times, so we have a total of four cards. Finally, I'm replacing the text and images, so each card feels distinct. That's all we need for the HTML. The structure is consistent, the content is in place, and everything is ready for styling. So let's jump into the CSS next. I'll start by importing two fonts. One is clean grotesque that I'll use for the body text and the other is a tall condensed typeface that I'll use for the titles. Next, I'll define four accent colors as variables. Each card will get its own color from this set which keeps the sequence feeling varied but still consistent. Then I'll do a quick global reset. I'll remove all the default margins and padding and set box sizing to water box so layouts are easier to control. For the page typography, I'll apply the grotesque font to the body. For images, I'll make sure they fully cover their containers so they crop nicely without stretching. Now for the headings, I'll make them all uppercase, switch to the condensed font and give them a very bold weight with tight line spacing. For smaller paragraphs, I'll also keep them uppercase but give them a medium font weight. Next, I'll style the hero and outro sections. Each one will take up the full screen, center its content both vertically and horizontally, and use a light background with dark text. Now let's move on to the sticky cards. I'll give the section a dark background. This is the background color that will appear when the cards fade out. Each card will use sticky positioning so it pins while the next one enters. I'll also enable 3D context on the card and add perspective. That perspective is what gives the motion depth. When we rotate cards, they'll tilt in space instead of feeling flat. Inside the card, we have a card inner layer. This is the piece that will actually move. It fills the full card, uses a vertical column layout and keeps text centered. I'll set its transform origin to the bottom center so when the card rotates, it tilts naturally from the base. I'll also tell the browser that this element will be transformed often, that way the scroll animation stays smooth. Now I'll assign colors, card 1 gets the first accent, card 2 gets the second and so on. 
This gives each frame its own mood. For the content, the info block will stay narrow with good padding, aligned left on large screens. The title will be oversized with spacing above and below so it feels like the focal point of each card. The description will be centered and limited in width to keep it readable. And finally, the image will fill the card, bottom area, with overflow hidden so nothing spills out during motion. Now I'll add a pseudo element on top of each card as an overlay. I could animate the card's opacity directly for the fade out animation, but that would make the next card show through as it stacks above which breaks the illusion. Instead, I'll keep the card fully visible and animate the overlay's opacity from transparent to black. As the current card moves behind, the overlay darkens so it looks like the card is fading out without revealing anything underneath. I'll keep the overlay non-interactive and layer it above the content so the dimming is uniform and doesn't affect clicks. Next, I'll add the responsive adjustments. On smaller screens, I'll reduce the headline size, recenter the info block and give it tighter padding. I'll also scale down the description text slightly so everything still looks balanced. That's all for the CSS. Everything is tied and ready for us to move on to the scroll animations. I'll start by bringing in three tools. GSAP for animation, scroll trigger to tie animations to scroll and Lenis to make the scrolling feel smooth. Next, I'll wait until the document is fully ready before I run any setup. Inside that, I'll register scroll trigger with GSAP so the plugin is available for our animations. Now I'll set up Lenis. I'll paste a small block straight from the Lenis documentation, same approach I use in other videos. This block turns on smooth scrolling and it also tells scroll trigger to update whenever Lenis scrolls so both stay perfectly in sync. I won't go deeper here, it just makes the page feel fluid. Finally, I'll collect all the cards from the page into a list. This gives me an ordered array I can loop through so each card can hand off cleanly to the next one during the scroll. Now let's walk through the scroll animation for each card. The goal here is simple, when a new card enters the viewport, we want the current one to gracefully move out of the way. It should lift upward, tilt backward in 3D space, get pushed further into the background and fade out. This creates a layered physical effect like you are flipping through 3D printed panels on a wall. To do this, I loop through all the cards on the page. But I'll skip the very last one since there is no next card coming after it to trigger its exit. Inside the loop, I'm grabbing the inner element from each card. This is the part we are animating, not the outer container. The outer card holds the perspective which lets us do 3D transforms on this card inner wrapper. So the actual movement happens on this layer. Next, I'm creating a scroll triggered animation using GSAPs from two method. This lets me define where the card starts and where it ends up as we scroll. The starting position is simple, the card sits flat, fully visible and in its original spot. Then as we scroll, here is what happens step by step. It moves upward to make room for the next card. It pushes backward along the z-axis so it looks like it's being pushed into the distance. It rotates around its bottom edge which tilts the card backward in 3D space. Now let's talk about how this animation is triggered. We are using the next card in the sequence as the trigger, not the current one. This means when the next card starts to scroll into view, the current card begins its exit motion. So the handoff always feels natural. One card arrives, the previous one steps away. I am setting a scroll range for this animation using start and end values. We start the animation when the top of the next card hits around 85% of the viewport and we end it when the same top edge scrolls far past the top around negative 75%. This gives us a long scroll window to let the card tilt and fade out smoothly. I am also enabling scrub which means the animation stays in perfect sync with the scroll. Finally, I am pinning the current card in place while the animation is playing. That way, it doesn't scroll away while it's animating. It stays frozen in same spot, giving the rotation and fade effect space to play out. And I'm turning off pin spacing so we don't add extra space to the layout. This keeps the cards tightly stacked and avoids any awkward gaps.
In the next step, we'll add a dark overlay to help with the fade without letting the background show through. Let's move on to that. This one's for the black overlay we created earlier using a pseudo element in CSS. If you remember, that overlay sits on top of the card and starts completely transparent. We'll use it to simulate a fade out but in a cleaner, safer way. So here, I'm animating the CSS variable that controls the overlay's opacity. As we scroll, I'll raise it from 0 to 1 which makes the black overlay fade in and that creates the effect of the card quietly disappearing into shadow. I am tying this animation to the same next card as before. That means, as the next card scrolls in, we are not only moving the current card backward, we are also fading a dark layer over it at the same time. This double layered approach keeps the transition clean and visually consistent. The scroll range for this one is a bit tighter than before. We start fading the overlay when the next card hits about 75% down the viewport and finish when it moves just above the top. That gives the fade in a smoother, more concentrated feel right at the moment the end of is happening. And just like before, I'm enabling scrub so the opacity change stays perfectly tied to your scroll position. So now, the exit animation has two synchronized layers, a physical 3D motion and a visual fade to black. That wraps up the card transitions. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.